Hello, 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 and welcome to my review of Friday Night Smackdown. What do I have to say about this show tonight, huh? Where do I begin? Oh, I swear there wasn't a lot going on here, I know that, but um, we will kick off the show, which they did advertise, I believe, yesterday. Intercontinental title on the line right off the bat, Roman Reigns versus Shinsuke Nakamura. What did Roman Reigns get, do to get a title shot? I don't know, but somehow he gets a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn was out there, was on commentary. He got involved in the match several times, of course, especially before commercial, um, but... Sammy got involved, and Nakamura hit Reigns with a uh, kick, knocking him outside of the ring. Uh, they had a good match overall, just in general, but of course, the ending happened. Roman was going to go for the spear. Um, was going to go for the spear. Sammy distracted him. Nakamura took him down. Was about to go for the Kinshasa, but Reigns did was Superman punch. He was about to go for the spear again, but next thing you know... Baron Corbin, or the King of Waiters Corbin right there, comes out, hits him with his scepter. Next thing you you know, disqualification then, because honestly, A, they don't need Roman with the title again, for whatever reason. And Nakamura, honestly, what has he done with that Intercontinental Championship that much either, but I don't think they want to take it off him anyways, because um, I don't even understand what the point of this match was. So, of course, have a DQ finish in an Intercontinental title match. Pretty much then, Corbin and um, Nakamura started taking out Roman. Of course, they did the deep six on him. And uh, next, you know, Daniel Bryan's music hits. He comes out. He makes the save, taking out Corbin and Nakamura. But Sami Zayn ended up grabbing his um, leg. And uh, Nakamura pretty much took Bryan down with a uh, Kinshasa uh, to end the segment. Not a bad match, but all I can really think of is I know they announced it later tonight. I said, watch this be a tag team match later in the night. Does it make a lot of sense? No, but knowing SmackDown, when stuff like this happens, you know it's going to be a tag team match. The New Day was in the back singing. Um, it was like a like another version of Wade in the Water, Children. If you, if you know that song, we're like, Hey, we want some New Day. I don't want no children. Uh, Big E said, why were they singing that? I don't know, but it was like their own version of it for some reason. Uh, next thing you know... Uh, Tucky there, uh, Tucker from Heavy Machinery shows up. He puts a table there. That they were talking about this tag team toy turmoil match, which I have honestly how that don't know how that match works in Blood Money Three, but they're trying to determine who's the best tag team in the world around here, which they got to make this a thing. And they want to boost Kofi Kingston's uh, spirits up and everything. Head into this tag match, but Kofi said the power of positivity. Honestly, still, they must still believe he has amnesia because they're not even, like I said before, they are not going to even have him mention the WWE Championship. It's just like he forgot he was even champion or even mention it anymore. Or even eight seconds, nothing. Still nothing. Not going to mention it at all. But next thing you know, um, Otis comes in with an apron on. Uh, with like Pretty much like an apron with you know, a woman's bra and everything in you know, a swimsuit. Um, they were pretty much had all this pancake mix, I guess, and they had some flour and batter with it. Uh, they poured it in there and asked, her, like, you guys hungry? New Day said, we got a match. That's going to give us cramps. And Biggie said, we don't swim, okay? But, um, next thing you know, Otis started drinking up all the batter mix, which is kind of disgusting when you think about it. And, uh, New Day just pretty much did their New Day Rocks thing and walked off. Uh... Caleb Braxton tried to talk to Corbin. Uh, Corbin didn't say anything. <sighs> Shorty Gable. Chad Gable. Wherever we're going with this, I don't even know. He, which by the way, they had a whole video package on him. Just talking about the whole Shorty thing of all the people making short jokes about him. And why he is Shorty Gable. They mentioned he's Chad Gable, but they says this is his nickname. Shorty Gable and... They say he's embraced the nickname now for some odd reason. Listen, he went against Curtis Axel. He won with the ankle lock. And he cut this promo right after, which wasn't, it didn't sound like a bad promo at first. You know, people talked about his height for a long time. That's held him back. But it's who he is. It's okay to see who you are and everything. And, you know, people just thought they could, you know, they wanted to make fun of him and everything, but he embraced himself. And you shouldn't hide or run for these people. Just accept who you are and, I guess, go back against them. I accept who I am. That's why I'm Shorty, J Shorty Gable. But then he says, no, 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 let's shorten that up. 
I'm Shorty G. Honestly, this was my fucking idea now that I think about it. I've kind of said this several times before. I called him Shorty G already before they even started calling him Shorty G, okay? They were making short jokes about him during the King of the Ring tournament. I'm the first motherfucker to call him Shorty G, okay? I came up with that idea if I feel like it for some reason. Now, I'm not saying the WWE's listening to my ideas or if someone else had this idea before me, too. Don't get me wrong. They started calling him Shorty Gable, but now they're calling him Shorty G. I've been saying that shit for the past couple months now. I'm surprised they even taken that. I feel like my idea is being taken. I may sound like some whack job right now saying this, but in a way, I feel like that's my idea. I've been saying that shit. I said that shit for fun. But now... This, these guys are serious in doing this. Listen, the promo was, wasn't was bad, but once he started saying, I'm Shorty G, that just kills the whole promo. That's basically what happened. It kills the whole, it kills the whole promo for some reason. Oh no, I'm not Shorty Gable, I'm Shorty G. So, overall, honestly, Shorty G sounds like a rap name. It really does. I feel like Gable's trying to become a rapper now, if, if that's going to be the case, but... I, I've been saying this Shorty G shit. I've been saying it. People that people that I know will tell you. I've been calling this guy Shorty G just to be being funny. And I was even serious about it. But now I feel like my idea is being taken for some odd reason. May sound crazy saying that, but I've been calling that dude Shorty G. I've been calling him that, okay? I've been saying that shit for fun, but he is still Chad Gable. I know people aren't really going to call him Shorty G or Shorty Gable, but watch his Titan Tron and his graphic change up next week on SmackDown. He's shorty motherfucking G. D- there you go. So, my idea though. I'm telling you. And then went to uh, this whole Team Flair versus Team Hogan thing. Seth Rollins is out because he has to go against Bray Wyatt again for the title. For whatever reason. Um, They talk about Ric Flair's um, on Twitter talking about, you know, Oh, um, Rollins is afraid of Team Flair and everything. Listen, they want Flair to get over. He should. Rick Flair should have said this in a promo. Like, Seth Rollins is afraid of me. He's afraid of God. Okay, I have God. That's what they should have Rick Flair do, like he did in um in TNA. Like, say you are talking to God right now. Okay, a wrestling God. That, that that's what they should have him come out and do. But then they start. They they go to uh, Hulk Hogan then racist motherfucker. Um. I guess he was, what, Clearwater, Florida, pretty much, you know, um, talking about this match and, what, Ricochet and Rusev on the team and, uh, I don't know, he said guys that were standing out the most, um, what, what was it, Cole asked about Mustafa Ali and Shorty G and, um, I don't know, he's gonna have a huge announcement and, you know, he's gotta do is what you're gonna do, blah, 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 moving on, it's eight man, ten man tag. Uh, eight-man tag then, Heavy Machinery in the New Day versus The Revival and Ruben Ziggler. Listen, most of this was just the announced team trying to hype up, um, this tag team turmoil, however it works. You know, it just ended up with The New Day and Otis, you know, um, the, um, Heavy Machinery winning. Midnight Hour was on Dawson, I think it was, for the win. The match was whatever. It wasn't really bad, but I, I don't really understand what was the point of either. Like, if they're trying to get this Saudi Arabia crap over, so I didn't even understand this match for the tournament. Uh, I mean, say for the tournament, I shouldn't even be saying that. Turmoil, I, I don't know how it works, so it's, it's just there. Uh, the interview, Daniel Bryan, who talked about, say it's going to be his first fight tonight on uh, Friday Night SmackDown since he's been drafted. I don't care about men, comp- grown men complaining about what show, first round, second round, fifth round, hundred round. I don't care. This is my first match on Friday Night SmackDown. This is my fight tonight, he's saying. Uh, they had a video from Mustafa Ali. Once again, calling the underdog. You know, um, pretty much he says he has a lot of heart, so... I guess hopefully they're doing something with Mustafa Ali along the way since he had a promo video. Miz TV happened as his guest was Bailey, uh, who had new music with Sasha Banks coming out with her. You know, because it's her friend. Miz says, I didn't know Sasha was going to be on here tonight. And yes, you have your supporting best friend here. Bailey pretty much interrupted us. Oh yeah, you come to ask me. Yeah, I, I beat Charlotte. I'm a two-time women's champion now, okay? Sasha said that um, Bailey is a Grand Slam champion. Miz Freeman's talked about the footage from last week and mm. 
talked about the footage from last week, though, as I was saying. Um, trying to know what else I could take from this, but it talked about the footage from last week. Asked Bailey, why did you do what you did? Bailey didn't really want to talk at first. Say, I don't want anyone an explanation. Miz said, kids idolized you. Bailey like she didn't care. And she says, oh, you're not going to talk. Uh, who are you, Brock Lesnar? You're a champion that never talks. <laughs> that was kind of a burn right there, which is actually true. And it's Sasha, you're Paul Heyman and everything. You know, it pretty much says that you're just playing second fiddle to Banks. Sasha pretty much interrupted and says, listen, she doesn't need the answer to you, okay? Especially to someone that got drafted in the fifth round, all right? Miz didn't really care. And, uh, you know, why did you have to slash the Bailey buddies? Bailey says, I slashed them, those stupid Bailey buddies, because they've been my throughout my entire career. I tried to be the nice person. I gave high fives and hugs and head and, you know, headbands, but nothing wasn't working for me. And when I lost my title at Hell in a Cell, I was heartbroken and crying, which people gave it a what chant, by the way, too. And no one was there to hug her, pretty much. She's put herself, you know, put herself second in her entire career for these children. And what if that's, what's that gotten her? Nothing. Okay, nothing. But now, I got my title back. And that no one is there to pretty much uh, congratulate her with a hug backstage. No one did. And that's why the, this division lacks desire and passion. And that she said she was going to bring it back. And she's got its fans. She, she wants some, exp- and some, uh, some inspiration. Just like Vince McMahon said years ago in the Attitude Era, Life sucks, and then you die. Which I'm sure Vince gave her that line because he said that shit back in, what, 2000 on SmackDown when they were doing that McMahon-Helmsley regime with DX or what was left of DX at the time. This is what, Triple H, X-Pac, and Road Dog and what, McMahon was out there and Stephanie and Tori and... Yeah, you know the promo. Go look it up. I remember that promo very well. Especially the, the life sucks and then you die thing. So I'm sure Vince fed that line because he said it himself before. Um... Nikki Cross came out then. Prima says that Bailey has had enough of her talking. And now it's time for some action. And said that, you know, um, she wants a title match and everything. Dana Brooks saying she's been underutilized and uh, overlooked. And that fuels her passion. And the flex appeal is here. Lacey Evans pretty much says she won a title shot too. This was a six-woman, six-pack challenge with Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans... Sonya Deville, Nikki Cross, and Carmella. Would you look at the graphic? Graphic. I didn't even know that was Carmella. I actually thought that was Charlotte again. I forget Carmella is blonde again um, half the time. Uh, you, you know, listen, this match wasn't bad or anything, but um, I look at half of these women like, what if any of these, what if any of them really do, what have any of them done to get a title shot really? Dana Brooke was mostly in catering and has done bullshit. Nikki Cross, well, she was the SmackDown Women's Champion, but tag team champion, but I'm not sorry, just women's tag team champion. But honestly, I just said fuck the belts. Carmelo was what hanging around with Truth all the time and was the 24/7 champion with him. So all she really did was piggyback with him. Lacey Evans, I got literally no idea anymore with her. I just don't know. Mandy Rose and Deville, they were going for the titles. For half the time, I don't think they're going anywhere. But, you know, it still doesn't make sense that they just moved Nikki Cross to SmackDown with Alexa Bliss. Because uh, the trade, which we don't even know who they got traded for this week. So, I, I don't know, man. Listen, isn't Bruce Pritchard the one running this show now since they fired Eric Bischoff this week? For whatever reason. Because I think, what, Bischoff was, like, in the company for, like, what, three, four months I think, to what I hear, what people told me, what they read, that Bischoff didn't know half these guys' names or whatever, so they hired Bruce, I don't know, man, Bruce Pritchard's getting a lot of power in this company today, okay, but, um, what's he, like, the executive creative director, so, did, I'm hearing a lot of people say, did he put this match together, because it's not good, listen, this wasn't bad, and they tried out there, but, uh, you know, one thing I did thought was funny, when, um, what, uh, Cole said, when they had Mandy Rose and Carmella in the ring, because, uh, they said, uh, all right, don't get too conflicted, Graves, which, you know, I'm sure a lot of people still, what, isn't he uh, banging Carmelo right now, if I'm not mistaken? But, um, you know, it pretty much ended up with a finisher fest, really, near the end, with Nikki Cross getting, like, the spinning neck breaker on uh, Mandy Rose for the win, so she will get a title shot against, um, Bailey, 
But um, do I think this is the most logical person? I don't know, man, because I, I don't feel like half these women didn't really deserve a title shot because some of them haven't really done anything or they just lost a lot. So I don't know. Braun Strowman, they had to hype him up still against Tyson Fury, who they're paying $15 million uh, for this match in Saudi Arabia, Blood Money 3. Who does he go against? Drew Gulak. You know, let me say this. First off, why are they having Gulak a job? Gulak is basically a job guy again, I see. Because, number one, this thing I don't get. Because, what, Strowman was out to beat him up, and, um... He gets on the microphone and he wants to introduce himself because he was his debut. He's a former cruiserweight champion in a story in combat sports. Which, you know, I see they went back to the PowerPoint thing when he was first started off in 205 Live. Let me introduce you to my PowerPoint. And um, he went to help Strowman with about 345 slides. They showed the first slide. Pretty much um, Strowman beat him up. He threw him around. He did his little running thing he did, which he tripped and fell on the ground while running into um, Drew Gulak, uh, Gabba Gulak himself. Threw him back in, in a power slam and it's over. First off, listen, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I'll tell you right now. I don't watch 205 like that. I don't really watch it at all. But wasn't Drew Gulak like a dominant force on 205 Live and everything? And was the former Cruiserweight champion and put on this great match with Leo Rush last week on NXT? Now I know people are trying to say, well, he's like Suzuki over there or some shit in 205 with this like shooter style gimmick he was doing with the, like, like the robe coming out and everything and the hood and stuff. But now he's drafted to SmackDown and he's basically a job guy. He just jobbed the Strowman. And this guy was just the former Cruiserweight champion, put on a great match with um, Leo Rush. And allegedly, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't know all he did on 205, but I heard he was a dominant force to be reckoned with, with in 205. And by the way, 205 is still on live after SmackDown, so um, why don't you just keep him over there? Because main roster, job guy, so. Uh, so I've told me a lot of these 205 guys that got drafted the wrong SmackDown weren't going to go anywhere. And this is now the first thing of it. Already jobbing them, folks. Already jobbing them. Uh, next week, uh, by the way, SmackDown will not be on Fox next week due to the World Series airing on TV. So they will be live one week on FS1 on uh, Fox Sports 1. So, uh... They will be on there. I haven't really seen that backstage show yet. I may, I may check that out once. I heard it was good. Maybe I should check it out. But in the main event, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. By the way, Daniel came out in his entrance. Then they pretty much give um, King the King of Waiters and uh, the Neon Kano champion a jobber entrance. So they could bring Roman Reigns out. Because he has to have the last part of entrance. And they give him this big introduction. He is now the team captain of Team Hogan. Since Seth is taken out. Roman Reigns will lead. Team Hogan. That's how it's going to go. As for the tag match itself. It wasn't that bad. It was okay. Uh, I didn't know what Brian hitting the Kinshasa. Not Kinshasa. But uh, the running knee. Uh, on uh, Nakamura. You know say he pinned the Intercontinental Champion. Because you know what Roman. He speared Corbin. Because you know. um, They, they still got to be in that Saudi Arabia show. So. Um. That, that's what they got to do because they're the team captains. I know Brian's not really in this because I don't think Brian wants to go over there anyway. Well, he didn't go over there last time, so he just doesn't want to be over there. But, um, listen, honestly, was it really anything big that happened on SmackDown I could really name from this show? Not really. Uh, it almost feels like things are just kind of back to whatever when SmackDown was already going. So, listen, you had an Intercontinental title match, which was for whatever reason. Which ended up in a tag team match later in the night. The six pack women's thing. It's kind of like whatever. Shorty G. I still feel like they stole that idea from me. So that's kind of whatever too. But I, I did come up with it first. Um, what else? Strowman uh, killing the cruiserweight. Hold on a second. Yo, who is this? Hold, hold that thought for one minute. Hold that thought real quick. I'll be right back. But yeah, that, that it's not much I can say from this show. 
But yeah, I, I don't really know what I can say from this show. I feel like it was, wasn't really a lot going on. It's like two hours just passed by. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. That's all I can really take from this show, okay? I don't know. It's, SmackDown was just SmackDown. Just, just stuff going on. It wasn't really anything going on until they want to hype up Blood Money 3 or whatever they're trying to hype up. So it's almost like, I don't know, business as usual with SmackDown, I guess. Business as usual. But other than that, I am done with this show. I'm out of here. Okay, the Bailey promo, I guess, was pretty good then. But I don't know how much you can take from that and taking the Vince line. But other than that, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about this show. I am done with this review. I'm going to check out Impact. It most likely will be a Bound for Glory this Sunday, if hopefully, maybe. But, uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter at HoodandNight890. I will see you guys later. Peace out. I'm out.